effective. Yeah. Oh, there's the lights. It's better without the lights. <laughs> I have no style. I don't know how to direct. I just deal with people is all it's about. And, and I try to make it enjoyable. I, the main thing for me is to, is to assemble a group of people that will have fun. I find humor has got to be part of all of the stuff we do, whether it's tragic, whether it's romantic. There's got to be fun and humor to give life to it. It's one reason I don't like opera. I've seen too many operas where people stand and sing. And for me, that is not what you should be doing. And I, I, on Faust being my first opera, the one thing I did say, I want good actors. I'm assuming they're going to be good singers, but I want good actors as well as good singers because the, the pressure is always on to get the best singer. Well, the best singer may not be best for the show because you want people that can act, can bring life to it. So in the case of Faust, we didn't have um, a Faust uh, until about a month before we started rehearsals. No, that isn't the way it works in opera. People are booked years in advance. And I just dug in my heels. I said, no, 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 no. I want an actor. And uh, luckily, Peter Hoare was in uh, production here in uh, the e and uh, just before we started. And his name came out. I said, get him. <laughs> And it's been like that because I find there's a certain rigidity in the way opera is done. And if you've got actors who can actually act, you can bring, the, bring life to the characters. And that, to me, is the key to it. What's interesting about opera design is that when I was doing Python, the animation, I kept using a lot of artwork by the Bibianas, who were great opera set designers. And it was great stuff, so I could just cut it out, I could color it in and use it. So I was, in a sense, involving myself with some bits of opera, the bits of opera I like, because I've always been intrigued by the design of opera, the staging of opera, uh, not the casting of opera. In Cellini, I've always loved Piranesi's artwork, so we started designing it, and we got a little sidetracked because we got too involved in making Piranesi three-dimensional, and it became too costly. There was no way of doing it. So I just went back to Piranesi's original drawings, started cutting them out, cutting them flat. So it was a, a three-dimensional world with just two-dimensional artwork through the whole thing. And that started working. Also with Cellini, the key to the whole tale is the casting of his beautiful statue of Perseus. So, okay, there's a statue. The one, the real one in, in, in Florence is just slightly over life-size. Well, that's not so good on the stage. I kept playing with So let's go big. And so one of the first things you see is uh, this huge head, this gigantic golden head of Perseus. And then you, and, and we're into his studio, which bits of the body are there. And finally, at the end, we're able to assemble a Perseus. It's, it's got to be, what is it? That must be about 20 meters high. Luckily, the stage only reaches up to his uh, nether region. I want to give people lots of space to play, but I also want to encourage them to do things that in their right mind they wouldn't consider doing. <laughs>